Hi, I'm Justin from workmanagement.tools. In this video, I'm going to show you how to automate emails from ClickUp, like a drip campaign going out over time based either on time or status updates and other changes to your tasks. So to make this happen, we need something that's going to connect the different platforms we're going to use. For our emails, we can either use a, I'll call a consumer level uh, email application, such as Gmail or Outlook, or we can use a bulk email provider such as MailChimp, ActiveCampaign, etc. Uh, in this video, I'll show you how to do the simpler uh, consumer level one. So I'll use Gmail. So the platform that's going to be taking all those actions and joining them all together is Make. It's an automation platform that is my personal favorite um, just because it's much more powerful than ClickUp's internal automations um, and other automation platforms on the market. So if you're going to learn one, I would highly suggest you learn Make. So, I'm going to take you straight into the guts of this today, um, assuming that you already know how to use Make. If that's not the case, don't worry. I have a course on how to use Make. It'll take you from the absolute beginning all the way up to being able to create fairly decent automations and um, they'll cover most of what most businesses would need. And we'll do all of that in only a couple of hours. So you can get that at workmanagement.tools forward slash make. I'll put that link in the video description as well as any current promos. Okay, let's dive into it. So first of all, let's look at what we're working with. So here I've got a list of clients. We have multiple clients and each one has an email address. Now, we may wish to set up emails, for example, the day after a new client is created and then three days after and five days after, etc. Or we might wish to send out emails based on these different status updates or some other update. So I'll show you both of these examples. So let's jump into our make platform. So first we need to decide net trigger. So let's do the one based on status changes first. So let's go our click up modules and we'll watch tasks uh, and we'll use the instant option. So we'll straight away, um, whenever a task is updated, this particular um, automation will find out about it. Now for that, we need to create a connection between the two. So we'll hit add here and we want to name it really well so they don't get confused with other ones. So we'll say client list status updated because that's what we're going to do. We're going to select the event of status updated. So it's only going to trigger when the status is updated uh, in that list. It could be updated to anything. Um, but it has to be the status updated, not anything else. If we're going to use a custom field, we'll instead use the task updated one. And then we'll select just our client list because that's the only place we want it to be triggering. Great. So that connection has now been made and it's ready to start receiving information. So once that comes in, then we need to send an email. So here we'll choose which email provider we want to use. Um, they're all fine. You can use whichever one that you most prefer or already have. Um, here I'm going to use Gmail just because it's a really common one, um, particularly for small scale um, operations. If you did have a um, bulk email provider, I would suggest using that over your Gmail. So here I'm going to send an email. Now we need to choose our recipient. So we'll hit add a recipient here. And we're going to map in the email from the task that triggered this. So. This actually doesn't come in right now. The watch tasks module doesn't give us very much information. So we'll chuck an extra one in the middle called get a task. And so that will get all the information uh, about that task. So we'll map in the task ID from our watch tasks module. And let's try running that just so we have some information to, to work with. So let's grab the task ID for this one. And then we'll just run this module only. Chuck in that task ID without the hashtag and we can see the data that comes through. And then we'll add our recipient from our custom fields email. Now subject, um, probably would set the subject, it's gonna be the same one every time for each client. So maybe this is our welcome one. Great, and then we can add whatever content we want, including HTML tags. Um, so if you have this already somewhere else, you might just copy and paste it in. Awesome, if you want attachments, you can add those. If you wanna change the from email address, you can go show advanced settings, change the from. I'm just going to leave it as what my Gmail account's already set to, and I'm not going to add any BCCs or CCs, so we can get rid of that. Then we'll hit OK. Now, we're missing one important point. This is going to trigger on any status change, whereas realistically we only want perhaps changes to a certain status to trigger this. Honestly, because it's a welcome email, we might do it as create new task. Um, but let's say, for example, we send this email when it changes to concept. So here we'd want to put a filter in, and our condition is in history items. In after, we want the value to be um, concept. Let's pull some data in though, just so we can check how it's going to look. So let's run this module only, and we'll go into ClickUp and we'll change this one into concept. 
cool and that's pulled through we can see we've got history items one after status is concept history items after and now status shows up and we'll look at equal to concept and we have that be text cool so now we're about ready to go um, let's test that out hit save first so we'll run once let's listen for new ones and then we'll mark that as concept Great, and that's sent, and let's see if that works. Great, and that's come through, and now we notice that we don't have any um, spacing here because the spacing is done by HTML and we didn't create any HTML. So we'll chuck in some HTML spacing. Okay, now that's, that's pretty much done. We can take this a little bit further. So what we can do is, because there might be different emails we wanna send out for different statuses, and when the task changes status, this module will always be triggered no matter what status it is. So we could have one uh, automation per different status, but that's a bit of a waste really because they'll all be triggering at the same time. So instead, what we can do is chuck in a router here and then have it that we have multiple branches off this router. So we have one here, and then we can clone that one, clone this one, and again, one line for each of our different statuses. Now this one is only when status is concept. We could have um, all of our different statuses here. Let's say running, this might be like ads, the ads are running. And it's the exact same thing, history item after status equal to running. And this one is review. Cool. And then we can simply change the emails. So we change the subject line we do need to change this um, email field because instead of pulling from this module, it's now pulling from this module. Here we go, so we've got email, same thing with name, which is task name, and then we'll change you know, what it's all about. So we'll say your ads are running, congrats. And you'd probably put more here, but you don't need to watch me type out a bunch of stuff. The exact same thing on this one, but that is essentially our um, automation, assuming we're doing it based on status changes. And we also want to see what it would look like if it was based on time. So let's create a new automation here. Okay, so now our whole trigger system is going to be different, but the emails will probably be same or similar. So instead of watching for task changes, what we want to do is have this trigger a certain amount of time after each client is created. Now there are a bunch of different ways of doing this. Um, the one that I like, that I think I'll use here, is like a set number of days after the creation date. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm actually just gonna list all tasks in our particular list. So we'll go uh, into select our clients list, and we won't include any that are archived, closed, or um, subtasks, but we'll remove the limit. Okay, so we're gonna have multiple bundles from that. Um, but then we want to check what the created date is. So we'll use a, a get a task module here actually. And from that we'll get the task ID, map that over. So we're going to pull that in. And let's test that out. Okay, so in here we should have a date created. Great. Now actually I'm going to keep our router so we have different um, versions. We don't need these get a task modules anymore because we've already done it. Um, but our filters are going to be different. So instead of these filters, we're going to say two days after creation. And then possibly, let's say, five days. And then let's go ten days. Okay. And so now to set up actual filters for that, what we want to do is we want to say get a task, date created, and then we'll go add days. So add days to date created, and in this case it is two. And we want that to be equal to, in date time, the day of now. And I'm just gonna use some formatting so that we can make those uh, match each other, even if the seconds and minutes and hours are off. So what we'll do is we'll chuck in a format date here, 
using that date and then we'll do it as year 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 hyphen hyphen month hyphen day day and not include the hour or, or seconds we'll do the exact same thing with our now value okay and let's just check that works with the date time operator we may need to change it to text and then we'll change our email here so it's pulling in the values from this get a task option now this will happen on schedule so this list of tasks list all tasks it's not actually a responsive it's not a trigger it's an action so it'll just happen whenever it gets told to happen right now it's every 15 minutes we definitely don't want that um, because we're checking for like a whole day increments we can just simply have this run once per day so and we can say what time of day do we want it to be it might be that we do it at you know 9 a.m or you know maybe 11 a.m that can get settled settled in at work first cool and that is how we do an email drip based on days after creation if you're having trouble with any of that or would like me to build your automations for you reach out to me at make at workmanagement.tools and we can see if we're a good fit for each other otherwise if you'd like to do it yourself grab the automation course in the video description it'll get you off to a flying start in no time flat and give you the skills to adjust this automation as you need or to create your own automations from scratch based on whatever your business needs powerful flexible automation can change your work and business all right that's all from me. Be well.